down front. So what else? I read, finished reading a article by Peter Elbo and friends about using home language in the writing classroom. And what is exciting is to see how many times their work is a total setup for talking about online environments where kids write and read and use language and um, and where they publish uh, things that they have written that are informal home language, first language kinds of things. Um, so starting with that second point where they publish Peter tells a story, Peter Elba tells a story, or makes a comment, really, that the kind of informal writing the kids could do could be on, um, in a class publication. And, you know, that was written ten years ago. And of course, they can publish that on News Voices, for example. Uh, there's a lot on Youth Voices that's incomplete, incoherent even. <laughs> Less than coherent, let's just say. Um, written quickly uh, from... Uh, not that it's incorrect, it's that it's vernacular to use. The word that he has begun to use now. But, uh, Worth thinking about is how vernacular now needs to include online work as well. So the young person's vernacular is what he uses on World of Warcraft, right? That's his language use as much as uh, what he says to his buddies at the pizza place or to his teacher in his classroom or at home. So, at once, it's a more complicated picture. In the end, what it means is you need to learn how to honor and respect and listen to all sorts of different languages that kids produce and invite it in some way. And all the complications around power and and vernacular that come up with American African American vernacular English. I mean, I call it Black English. Um, are really important, and they handle them well in that article. I thought, yet the example they gave of the teachers teaching Creole. I've seen this article before, but um, that example where they brought in a linguist to talk about the importance of Creole and all of that and develop trust is like a head on we're going to be talking about using home language. And I'm not sure you have to be that direct about it. In fact, I think you don't. And I think it's kind of by putting it in the center like that, it tends to make the... I don't know, it brings up the fences that might not be there if you just say, Write whatever you're thinking right now. However you want to write it. So... 
uh, once again, what I would add to that is the ability to communicate and do first drafts like I'm doing them now. Um, you know, video, oral, um, audio. And, um, and you know, you're more likely to do first language and home language when you're just talking. You know? So, so it makes me wonder, uh, you know, what kind of stuff we've added when we can uh, talk about doing a first draft orally. I saw Misty do that last year, a student who expressed her feelings one time and then developed those thoughts in a, into a piece of writing. Uh, she first expressed them in video and then there's the free writing from it and the video wasn't wasn't able to capture what she wanted to say. So that's uh you know they end their article with that was saying that uh, that there are going to be times in the classroom when you can't say what you want to say in standardized English. And uh, that is probably the key. That when I think of Misty's experience with the video, um, she went to writing because she needed the reflective um, black and white I don't know what it is sort of a language whatever language does written language um, that is different than oral language she needed that control once she got the feelings out um, on the video so that was a really interesting process to watch. I think we should look for more things like that. You know, even within audio, um, video, there's a question of dialogue or talking straight to a camera with just your thoughts. Uh, You know, I can think that it's uh, more like right now I'm not interrupting myself too much, but that uh, it's easier to, to say it on your own train of thought if you're the only one talking in a dialogue. But I don't think that's always true. I think uh, Jose begged the other day for a dialogue. He wanted to talk about something on tape. He, and, and he needed the, the other person there, he felt. Yeah, maybe it's an easy way out, but that's what he needed at the time. So, I think what I've done around detox this semester has been really important um, in that students can choose to be writing uh, journal entries in Google Docs and keep them track that way or they can be doing audio or if you're doing that or they can record um, video that can be on a Google Hangout or can be just directly t posted to YouTube. So that range of options
is uh, one of the things that yeah is worth considering from the can is it okay to use home language and the other thing is the amount of um, informal home chat whatever the wild variety of language that gets used online um, is available to students. That's another uh, issue. So this, the kind of media you, you can use, the kind of media to, to produce your thinking, the kind of media that you uh, watch. And by media that includes writing. It's not exclusively writing. But the kind of media and writing that you learn from, participate in, dialogue with, um, see all the time, um, and become models for your own work. Um, what was the story? Oh. So there's the media that you might use that changes things, makes more, actually what it makes is more, um, it returns speech to a uh, composing process earlier in the process, I think. But it also, um, there's publication of informal and um, odd and crazy and wonderful and all sorts of discourse gets published online so that ability to self-publish quickly in the process um, ability and we encourage it I think are two really important things that could add to the conversation And then the third, and I guess it's related, but uh, is to consider the uh, the number of discourse communities that students might or might not be involved with. Um, it's an important thing for us to pay attention to, listen to, elicit. Entice and uh, document uh, in our students and to build on so that when we say is it okay for them to use their home language, maybe we're also saying is it okay for them to use their chat language? Is it okay for them to use the you know processes they use in Deviant Art and uh, you know on Facebook? Um, so, yeah, those are three really, uh, so um, I'm not critiquing the article, I understand it in its context, but we need to uh, take the principles from that context and uh, apply them to the 21st century and uh, digital media and writing online. So, you know, the biggest compliment I was ever given by Courtney Captain uh, at a workshop that I was blessed to have her in once was that uh, I had Bolter uh, checked Stephen Bolter um, uses the word remediate um, when he talks about how we take things ways of reading and writing and learning um, from old media and put them in new media